Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I would love to see you stick around. This video is going to be done as a voiceover only because it's going to be a little bit easier for me to get this video out faster since there are a few updates to the Tory Bell lawsuit video that I put out last week. Before we go ahead and hop into going over the lawsuits, there are a few disclaimers that I need to make. First and foremost, I am not a legal professional. I'm not a lawyer or anything of that nature. This is not intended to be legal advice. Please don't sue me because I am only going to be going over the lawsuit and then talking about how I'm interpreting it. Everything in this video is alleged only because this lawsuit is still ongoing. In addition, this video is just for entertainment purposes only and just my opinions, but let's go ahead and start off with this first portion. If you remember from last week's Tory Bell lawsuit video, it kind of ended on the note of Laura Hunter and Tory Bell were asking for an extension. It was kind of up in the air. This particular document, in my interpretation, it is a response to that whole situation. Here it says, Declaration of Laura Hunter in support of counterclaim defendants Tory Bell Cosmetics LLC and Laura Hunter's reply on motion for extension of time. Hearing noted for calendar December 9th, 2022. This is what the rest of the document says. I am over the age of 18. I am competent to testify and I make this declaration based on personal knowledge. I was able to submit this reply declaration by December 9th, 2022, as I was out of the country for work on December 9th, 2022, and unable to connect with counsel to finalize. I'm going to pause it here because I actually have some information that someone went ahead and sent me. Laura was in a movie and it was Vengeance to Bloodlines and it's Death Curse Society. I have never heard of the first one and I haven't watched this, so I'm so sorry if I'm saying the title of that incorrectly, but that is the movie that she was in and apparently one of their executives. I will go ahead and play the TikTok here for you guys. Babe! Babe! Where are we going? <laughs> we're on our way to the airport to go to Iceland. Um, we're gonna pick up Laura and Bob. Laura is one of the co-stars in the movie and also one of Jason's co-workers. Um, so is Bob. So is Bob. We're so excited. <laughs> and Laura, Laura played Detective Carter. She was in the morgue scene with Louie there. And um, so she and her husband, Bob, are gonna accompany us to Iceland. It's gonna be a great time, more to come. Jason Brooks is actually the VP of e-commerce marketing and a creative. That's what it says on their website. There was another TikTok that was also posted. However, I cannot play the entire thing through because they went to a, I don't even wanna say the word on this channel because I don't really wanna get demonetized, but it rhymes with Schminus. So <laughs> they went to a Schminus <laughs> museum. So I can't really play the TikTok because there are a lot of Schminuses in part of the video. However, there is a still from it that I wanted to go ahead and show. And here it shows that they are in the Blue Lagoon in Iceland. I do just wanna say that Laura was probably there for the, maybe there was a premiere for the movie or something. So I guess you can kind of call it a work trip. However, in my personal opinion, this is not an attack on anybody, but in my personal opinion, I think that if you are on a work trip and you're kind of just hanging out in the Blue Lagoon, I think you can take a couple of minutes to call your lawyers and try to figure out how to respond to the counterclaim to the lawsuit that you actually started in the first place. That's just my opinion. And if you guys remember from the last video, they actually talked about how they don't think that Laura is allegedly taking things seriously within this case. So I just wanted to point this particular portion out, not because I'm trying to ensue any type of drama or hate or anything like that. However, I do find it kind of interesting given that there's this lawsuit going on and you were already told that you weren't allegedly taking it seriously. So I thought it was just good to point this portion out. Back to the document. I am the CEO for Tory Bell Cosmetics LLC, the plaintiff and counterclaim defendant in this matter, and I am also a counterclaim defendant as to defendant Meek's wage claims only. 
I submit this in reply as to the motion for extension of time filed by counsel for Tori Bell and myself on December 1st, 2022. Prior counsel for Tori Bell and as to me personally terminated the relationship between us August 19th, 2022 and filed to withdraw on August 24th, 2022. Tori Bell, the primary party as an LLC, could not proceed pro se, and I personally needed counsel to address the specious summary judgment motion filed by Meek on August 26, 2022. I was given until November 21st, 2022 to find counsel, and I did so after diligent search. Since that time, I sought counsel daily for months. I called every law firm and attorney that seemed available, even contacting law schools for help. I scoured the internet and other sources. The money to pay for counsel was limited, so some firms were financially out of reach. I joined Legal Shield, but it turned out that that type of work available would not be appropriate for an ongoing federal court matter. I said Legal Shield that way because if you guys don't know, Legal Shield is actually an MLM. A little side note, if you've been here for a while, I actually also said this I think in a previous video, but if you have been here for a while, you remember how I used to do anti-MLM true crime hybrid videos. There was the Jody Arias case who murdered Travis Alexander and they actually met at a Legal Shield convention. So that is just a little tidbit of information so that's why I reacted the way that I did because I do know that Legal Shield is an MLM. I also contacted attorneys who posted for available hourly work on such sites such as Upwork and Fiverr. I followed up on all referrals from friends. All told, I estimate that I tried to contact close to 100 firms or counsel. I received very few responses. I would be very curious to know why the previous lawyers and, and attorneys did leave because if she had such a solid case, and this is not me making any sorts of uh, allegations or accusations, whatever you want to call them, this is just pure speculation, but if you had such a solid case, why would people who were supposed to represent you, why would they leave? Why would it be so hard for you to find a lawyer? This is, this is, again, this is just speculation on my part. Many of my attempts at outreach were ignored. Most of the responses that I did receive were either that the firm could not take new clients or that counsel didn't want to be involved in something that was already complex and in progress. For others, they saw that Lashliner LLC, of which Tory Bell is a wholly owned subsidiary, had filed for bankruptcy. Therefore, a number of firms and attorneys I spoke did not want to become involved in matters which could be connected to a bankruptcy or which would need to be managed through the bankruptcy trustee, court, or lawyers. However, as this court noted, Tory Bell and Lashliner are separate companies and the bankruptcy of Lashliner is separate from work for Tory Bell. Order extending time in which to retain counsel, noting that bankruptcy of Lashliner does not apply to Tory Bell. If you guys are unfamiliar with the whole Tory Bell versus Lashliner thing, so yes, they, they did file for bankruptcy, but Lashliner was strictly just affiliate marketing, whereas Tory Bell was the multi-level marketing side of the uh, business, I guess you could say. Like she said, they were two completely separate companies. Miss Meek has also had multiple lawyers in this case who were afforded time to onboard and come up to speed. I did not post the image as submitted in Meek's response or make the comments attached to the image. This was not posted by Tori Bell and never appeared on the Tori Bell page or in any communication platform I have. I'm assuming this is referencing the screenshot that I put on the screen in the last video of it was Tori Bell, then it was a screenshot of Laura Hunter, and on it it said, Let's party in Punta Cana on August 9th, I think it said, when they filed for bankruptcy on August 8th, if I'm remembering correctly. I believe that's what she is referencing here. Then it says, this appears to be like many other images that were posted by Meek and others who would post images on various platforms, some of which referred to their group as Touring Hell or Lash T. This image of Punta Cana, yeah, okay, so it was that, that screenshot, appears to be a photoshopped image made of numerous images put together, such as using the Tory Bell logo, adding commentary and emojis and so forth. The original image appears to be a still frame photo from a video of a Tory Bell event. This was an affiliate incentive trip that was earned by Tory Bell affiliates and paid for well in advance. Whomever posted or shared this took a screenshot of the video and added the caption about the bankruptcy of Lashliner, not Tory Bell, with emojis. 
I do not know who did this. Okay, I don't know why, but I can't take this portion of it seriously, only because she says that it was photoshopped. It's literally just a screenshot of a Tory Bell Live, and then someone just put emojis on it. I think it's kind of funny that emojis are being brought up in a legal document. I don't know why. I just find that very hilarious. <laughs> I don't know if I already read this, but I do not know who did this. Meek's counsel uses such false images to infer as on page 10, 17 to 19 of the response that, quote, Miss Hunter does not appear to be approaching the litigation with the degree of seriousness originally alleged, which is evident in prior counsel not being paid while Miss Hunter partied in Punta Cana, end quote. He goes further in the response and speculates that this is why prior counsel withdrew with no basis whatsoever. This image is being used to make it seem as if I am trying to make a mockery of the courts and the financial situation. This is not correct in any way. I take this litigation very seriously. Further, in the declaration submitted by Rosenberg in response to the motion for extension of time, Mr. Rosenberg says in his declaration, quote, Miss Meek is not a repeat player in this world, end quote. I'm not sure what, quote, repeat player, end quote, is referring to, my understanding is that Miss Meek has been with five companies performing direct sales since 2019, and one of those companies is a party to this suit. This is purely speculation on my part, but I think what the lawyer may have been talking about, how Miss Meek is not a repeat player in this world, I, I think, now this is again just speculation, please don't sue me, but I think what he was trying to say was in the beginning of the last lawsuit that I went over, it's the same lawsuit, obviously, but it's a different document that went along with the lawsuit. The lawyer did state something about Laura allegedly going after ex affiliates of the company. And I know that she has sued other people that were part of the company as well. So I don't know if that's what he's referring to, not referring to the whole Natalie being in different MLMs. I declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the state of Washington and under all federal statutes and rules that the foregoing is true and correct. The next document that we're going to go over, this is in response to the last document that we just went over. It says order granting in part motion for extension of time. This matter comes before the court on the motion of plaintiff counterclaim defendant Tory Bell Cosmetics LLC and counterclaim defendant Laura Hunter for an extension of time in which to respond to pending motions and to pursue discovery. Having reviewed the memoranda, declarations, and exhibits submitted by the parties, the court finds as follows. One, the moving parties and their prior counsel controlled the timing of counsel's withdrawal. The fact that they choose to end their relationship after having filed a motion to dismiss but before briefing was complete is not good cause for allowing a belated reply. Two, Meek speculates that withdrawing counsel were ethically barred from continuing to represent the moving parties, although there is no support for this assertion if Meek believed in her decision to file a motion for summary judgment as soon as the break in the representation was made known and more than four months before the dispositive motions deadline can only be seen as an attempt to gain an unfair tactical advantage against newly unrepresented parties. Allowing the moving parties to respond to the motion for summary judgment now that they have counsel will avoid the potential for an unjust result and will not unduly prejudice Meek. Three, discovery opened in this matter in February 2021 at Tory Bell's insistence. The court denied defendants' request to stay discovery while defendants' motion to dismiss was being briefed and decided. Thus, the moving parties had over a year and a half before counsel withdrew from the representation to serve discovery and follow up on any deficient responses. If, as asserted by newly retained counsel, defendants failed to respond to discovery served in 2021 and no discovery has been served with regards to Meek's counterclaims, the moving parties have failed to show that they were diligent in attempting to comply with the case management deadlines. In the absence of good cause, the request to extend the discovery deadline will be denied. For all of the foregoing reasons, the motion for extension of time is granted in part. The clerk of court is directed to renew Meek's motion for summary judgment on the court's calendar for consideration on Friday, January 6, 2023. 
The moving parties may file their response on or before Friday, December 30th, 2022. Meek's reply, if any, is due on or before the note date. My interpretation of this part of the document is that they are not extending the discovery so they can come up with more evidence to support their claims. However, they are extending the response for Laura. And after that, if Natalie wants to respond to that response, then she can. Once that's over, it's up to the judge to kind of decide what happens next. Then if the judge doesn't rule in favor of the summary judgment, they'll go to trial. Again, this is only my interpretation of the lawsuit. If I have any people in the comment section who kind of understand law a little bit better, leave your comments in the comment section down below. This is just how I'm interpreting everything. The final document that I would like to go over, it's actually another lawsuit. Mombi, who if you don't know, I did mention her in my last Tori Bell video. I will leave all of her social media links and website and everything below. She is a great anti-MLM activist and just such an amazing human being. We were talking about this because she actually did send me these, these documents. This document is a Bank of America suing the company for debt. It's actually actually the judgment on it. And that judgment is that they owe the bank $831,505.83. Here it says Bank of America versus Tory Bell Canada Incorporated, Tory Bell Cosmetics LLC, Laura Hunter and Robert Kitzberger, husband and wife and the married community thereof. Order of default and default judgment against defendants. I'll leave it up on the screen, but it shows all the different totals and then the total judgment amount is the one that I just talked about. The total judgment amount shall bear interest at a rate of 12% per annum from the date of entry of judgment until paid in full. It shows the order of default on judgment, which is pretty much what I already went over, but the court finds as follows. One, defendants were properly served with summons and complaint in this matter. Two, no appearances or responsive pleadings have been filed on behalf of any of the defendants and defendants deadline to file an answer or responsive pleading has passed. Three, venue is proper and, and individual defendants Laura Hunter and Robert Kitzberger are not infants, incompetent, or engaged in active military service. I just thought of infant as in like a baby and I thought that was really funny, but anyway. Number four, defendants are justly indebted to plaintiff in the amounts claimed and plaintiff is entitled to entry of a judgment against defendants for the relief sought in the complaint. Five, plaintiff is entitled to recovery of its reasonable attorney's fees and legal cost. Now, therefore, it is hereby ordered that one, defendants are in default for their failure to answer or defend the complaint despite having been properly served. Two, judgment is entered in favor of Plaintiff Bank of America and against defendants Tory Bell Canada, Incorporated Tory Bell Cosmetics LLC, Laura Hunter and Robert Kitzberger, husband and wife and the married community thereof, jointly and severally in the amount of $756,562.61 plus additional interest in the amount of $104.17 per diem from November 14th, 2022 through the date of judgment. Three, plaintiff shall be awarded reasonable attorney's fees in the amount of $70,333 and legal costs in the amount of $4,610.22. Four, on and after the date of judgment, interest shall continue to accrue on the unpaid amount of the judgment at a rate of 12% per annum. Well, that video was a doozy with all the information that was sent my way. If you haven't seen the video that I did on the lawsuit last week, you might be a little lost with certain things, but I would highly recommend watching that video to kind of just understand a little bit more context about the first portion that we spoke about. I know that there are other lawsuits specifically against uh, ex-reps. So once, I feel as though once everything is a little more settled down with those lawsuits, I'll probably go over them. I just felt the need to talk about what has been presented to me so far. The Just the countless documents. I've had so many documents sent to me, but I felt as though the ones that I presented today and last week were really important to talk about. So. You guys let me know what you think in the comment section below and I guess that's all that I have for you guys today and I will see you guys next time. This is Monica reporting to you live from a highway. Bye!